One of the observations that comes to mind that has been made about sound, when sound came to film, photograph, when the, when the, the photograph suddenly had a soundtrack put on it around it, when radio was put around film, the effect of, the effect of sound on images was extraordinary. And it, as you remember, perhaps, was very disrupting. It caused uh, much heartburn and heartache and uh, much tossing out of old stars, John Gilberts and so on, because the radio image is a hot image, the photograph is a hot image, and when those two hot images get together, they do things to each other. They compel the movie camera to become a much more hi-fi, much more precise. One of the reasons for the charm of the old silence is that they're so lo-fi. They're very much like TV, which is real lo-fi. The silence are closer to TV, well, so is Batman, so are the comics, than they are to movies. And one of the observations that has been made about the coming of sound to movies was that instead of just presenting a sequence or story in a series of pictures, the tendency of sound was to cause the camera to dwell on each shot in depth and to include the whole story, as it were, in each shot. The shot became inclusive rather than exclusive. And this compelled all sorts of subtle mastery of form that was a considerable strain on the industry. It, um, well, I think you might say that it knocked some countries right out of the movie business, partly because of the vast new expense of sound and uh, the new virtuosity needed for photography. Uh, some of the leading countries in film production were knocked right out of the business. Uh, they didn't have the resources. The, um, however, that's merely uh, incidental. The, um, since TV, however, there has been much weakening of the storyline in film. TV is not a narrative medium. It doesn't need narratives. The individual shot is very inclusive, just like a cartoon. A cartoon is not a picture, and it has no point of view. It includes all possible point of view, points of view in each cartoon. Dagwood or uh, Little Abner or anybody, each, of the, each cartoon is complete. It's total. It's the whole image of that person in all his possible modalities. This isn't true of photography. Uh, photography is highly specialist. It selects an aspect, a moment in the life of the thing. The cartoon does not select a moment in the life of the thing, and the photograph does, the movie does. And this high selectivity in time, just the isolated moment, creates a very strange world. Storyline is very helpful and needful in film when it uses hi-fi photography. But in lo-fi, as in a chaplain, the need for intense uh, connectedness is much smaller. In TV, the need for connectedness is much less than in movie, for the same reason, and the uh, viewer can fill in at liberty many of the connecting missing bits. In the case of the influence of TV on movies, it might, I, I expect it might be illustrated by the sudden growth of the uh, interest in and the vogue for Dr. Zhivago's, Fellini's, Bergman's, in which storyline is rather incidental and insignificant compared to the mood, the mode, the modulation and variation of single 
situations and images. This variation of theme, of mode, is taking the place of storyline since TV. And I think you'll find that our children, uh, the TV generation, are not nearly so interested in narrative or storyline, whether in library form or in film form, as um, their older brothers and sisters. The um, loss of interest in narrative and the sudden upgrading of facts, you know, the romance shows, the thing novel, the research novel, the sudden interest in just raw data in cold blood, in place of story. And again, going with this, no interest in point of view. The angle is not important. The reviewers of Capote's In Cold Blood were puzzled in some cases, and some observed that the murderer probably was the author, or <laughs> alternatively, the reader. It couldn't have been, it couldn't have been those people in Kansas. Now, this, again, uh, a very confusing behavior on the part of our young, this indifference to ordinary responsibility and ordinary cause and effect in the older connected sense, storyline sense, this sense of involvement is so great that they no longer are too concerned about who done it or why. And um, this kind of involvement is almost an oriental thing, I think, in the t case of the TV generation. It goes along with a considerable loss of the sense of identity or a considerable loss of, him, of any feeling of importance attaching to identity. As you know, the existentialists have long urged that what we call our personal private identity is really just a kind of visa or classification, uh, arbitrary set of data which have a rather incidental relation to anybody. But this mood, I'm not trying to argue a case here, I'm simply pointing to this change of mood and this Loss of sense of identity is uh, uh, perhaps in its most extreme form manifested in the LSD and the drug sort of crazes where people deliberately scrub off the tape of personal awareness. 